It was double cheese, pepperoni, sausage, and they always would throw like a little, like always extra of meat on it. Like it, lo- it even looked like a pizza, just looked like a cheese pie. <laughs> you like, pull it off, and there's like still a hound of cheese on it. My dad once told me, "You eat more than you make me money, so yeah. you actually cost me money every time I send you to work." That is Winnipeg Jet defenseman Nate Schmidt, our special guest here in Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, alongside Tyler Esquivel. I'm Jamie Thomas. We are at the Winnipeg Jets practice facility, otherwise known as Hockey for All Center. Hockey for All Center. All lowercase. All lowercase. Do not make that mistake. I've done it. Do not capitalize any of those words. No, no. Then you'd be wrong. You would. What is not wrong is the two points the Winnipeg Jets registered the other night, uh, being the Los Angeles Kings 4-3. to three. Uh, Nate Schmidt will be along here momentarily, as are your comments coming up with the question of the week for ground control. Um, listen, there's a lot of a lot of places we can go after the, the win over the Kings on Monday night. First off, it ended a six-game winless slide. The Jets are getting cl- oh so close to clinching a playoff berth, which feels really good considering where they were sitting there for a little bit yeah I mean th- times were tough but I mean it, it's kind of a testament to just the work that they did throughout the entire season to build themselves a a, a cushion for lack of a better word um that th- that they that they had for themselves so uh yeah would you have liked to clinch the playoffs a little bit sooner yeah of course but you know you look at last season they didn't clinch the playoffs until what was the second last game second right? last game yeah so We've been talking about there's still eight games left, and I think had they you know had a bit better of a run than obviously the six game slide, we probably would be you know celebrating a there playoff. Be clinched yeah. banner up on the social. Exactly. And, yeah. Now the interesting thing here is you know last season you you clinch and you pretty much know who you're going to play. You look at that game in Colorado. Mm-hmm. There was t- a lot of guys sat because uh, they knew their opponent and they knew where they were going to finish. But now you clinch a playoff spot. You don't necessarily know who you're gonna play no. and there's still something to play for so um obviously it, an interesting scenario as the calgary flames come into town you know, I, I believe the jets can clinch a playoff spot which would be great mm-hmm. but that's not the only thing they need to take care of business of yeah and it's just about making sure your game is right before you go in the playoffs it's not so let's just be clear and rick bonus talked about this after practice is just because you clinch a playoff spot doesn't mean you relax and you're gonna sit everybody and waiting for there's a lot yeah. to play for still in turn home ice is still a, an opportunity for the Winnipeg Jets at this point but w- the coming into that game against Los Angeles Rick Bonus was clear he made some changes to the top six yeah and he just said you lose six in a row you got to make some changes uh, Mark Shifley with Gabe Velarde and Nikolai Ehlers Cole Perfetti you were asking yeah you wanted you, you asked all for it. <laughs> were asking and for you, that and you got that Sean Monahan <laughs> uh, obviously with uh, Cole Perfetti um, and I'm drawing a blank here on the on the other side. It's uh, Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor. And, that's, and I should be drawing a blank because Kyle Connor had an outstanding game three against assists. the Kings. Three assists. So Rick Bonus talked about that today about Cole Perfetti, and we'll get to him in a second. Talked about no changes to the top two lines for this little bit here, and we'll talk about some injuries uh, to deal with after this. Well, we got to a much needed win, so very happy about that. Um, yeah, obviously the uh, Monaghan line had a big night for us. Um, that made the difference in the game. The D pairings, yeah, that worked out okay. You know, when you're going through a losing streak, obviously the sometimes coaches switch things up and uh, players have to respond. So, um, you know, we're all in the NHL, uh, played with many different players and stuff like that through the year. So uh, it's on you as a player to, it doesn't matter who you're playing with, just go play. All right, few players not on the ice for practice on Wednesday morning. Uh, four of them. It was Adam Lowry, Nino Niederreiter, Sean Monahan, Logan Stanley. Logan Stanley has joined the list of players not feeling well. Yeah, he's got which, sick. <laughs> so Tyler Toffoli had that the other night. It hasn't fully worked his way through the entire team yet. So obviously they're just ticking one player off at a time. Tyler Toffoli will play uh, Thursday against the Calgary Flames. Lowry and Monahan were maintenance days, but Nino Niederreiter. Not such good news. Suffered a uh, cut on the back of his leg. Yeah. Um, and people may be asking, what about the Kevlar socks the players wear nowadays? Well, Rick Bonus said it could have been a lot worse had the socks not been there. So Nino's out for at least a week. Yeah, obviously when you, when you get stitched up like that, you mm-hmm. know, it's just going to take some time to, to heal and fuse. I think if you know if he's a quick healer, you know maybe you see him in the lineup against Nashville next week. Yeah. That, that would be the hope, I think. Yeah, it's at least a week. So and, and uh, so Tyler Toffoli is going to slot on the left side with uh, uh, Adam Lauer and Mason Appleton. The top six forward group going to remain the same. Yeah. And how about Cole Perfetti? Like, considering how little he has played recently, for him to get the opportunity with Tyler Toffoli out with an illness to come with not only two goals, 
not only an assist, but the game-winning goal uh, says a lot about Cole Perfetti and his, how prepared he was for that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think maybe, too, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, just the fact that he comes to the rink that day not really – expecting to to play and then instead of you know chewing on the fact that he's going to get this top six role for you know days in advance you know he just gets thrown into it it's like yeah you're going tonight and you can kind of play free and then obviously Kyle Connor shifts down to that second line with the swap Nikolai with Nikolai Ehlers yeah. I think it just changes the dynamic of things and you could tell right from go he was feeling it you know he was having opportunities having chances they were playing in the other team zone so to see him have the game that he did was great and and like Bone said I mean he, he you can't take him off that line right now. And then with the Nino Nina Ryder injury, you know, Tyler Toffoli fits perfectly in there. He yeah. Has, he's has a, played left wing before. And played left pre- wing. You know, has big a body like him and Nino are both scorers, but I think Toffoli has done that a little more consistently over his career. For sure. So I think it adds another nice little dynamic of offense on that third line that not that they were missing, but I think it would be a nice little bonus. So it would be interesting to see. Yeah. And then Rick bonus kept saying over and over again, Tyler fully scored 30 goals. So I mentioned that a couple of times he in did. that scenario. So another big body in that third line will she'll be going up against the Flames best line on uh, Thursday. But let's I mean, look how well the Adam Lowry line went up against the Kopitar line. Yep. There was a quick change and then uh, the Kopitar line just end up scoring without Adam Lowry's line out there to shut them down. But going back to Cole Perfetti, here's Rick Bonus talking about how well Perfetti played. The opportunities be given again in the top six and Cole Perfetti uh, after the win on Monday night. Well, yeah, we're not going to take him off that line now. So, I mean, he's, he's earned it. Uh, we told him when we get back in, we'll try to get you more ice time with the top six. He took full full advantage of it. So, uh, we'll go right back with it again, and we'll go for we. So it's, listen, the game's all about adjustments. That's what it is. And you see something you like, you let it go. If you see something you don't like, you change it. So, right now, we'll take a look at this, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I think, obviously, I think. Oh, it was huge for my confidence. Um, just you know, getting put in, a, in that chance, and and then obviously going to the net and, and just banging one early in is is um, you know that felt great. And then um, you know we, we created lots as a line, scored lots as a line. So I think um, it just felt really good. It, it was you know just really happy that I could contribute and, and help you know get back into that. Um, you know I missed that for a little bit, so it just feels really good to to get back and, and help this team win. We're just so giddy about the opportunity being given to Cole Perfetti in the second straight game against the Calgary Flames. So the ground control question of the week. What did you think of the changes at NHL Jets' top two lines? Anna says, so good. Bones needs to keep them this way. Moving on to Bells. Bones needs to keep this, please. We need to clinch. And then last but not least, Brad Lambert Fan Club. It's great to see 27-55-13 reunited once again. Thanks to everybody for their responses. Moving on to the play of the week. So everybody's happy about Cole Perfetti right now. And I thought, you know, there's you could feel the sense of relief for Cole when he scored the opening goal of the game. He's yep. on the side of the net there, bangs it underneath Cam Talbot for the one nothing Jets lead, and you just felt it. Like just, just a greasy one too. Yeah. You know, that was the right goal to score to maybe spark things. You know, if you go to the dirty areas, you know, you get a little puck luck and boom, back of the net. Yeah, it was it, it was fantastic. So that leads into our play of the week, and it was the game tied at three. Right after the Jets gave up a shorthanded breakaway that uh, yeah. fortunately went over top of the net. Jets come back the other way. Power play coming to a close. And then this happened. They just about had another one there. Back the other way comes Neil Pionk across the line. High slot. Now it is shot. They score. Cole Perfetti took the drop pass and ripped it past Talbot. Hi, I'm Nate Schmidt. Nate Schmidt shoots scores. And this is the Ground Control Podcast. Okay, so congratulations to Cole Perfetti, play of the week. Uh, you had the fortunate time of going down to Nate Schmidt, down to his neck of the woods in Minnesota, yeah. and got to check out his car collection. Yeah, him and his dad have a pretty wicked car collection. Now, Tom and him are very similar people, are they not? And yes. Yeah, yeah like, they are spunky individuals. <laughs> So, um, so when you talk to Tom, you get you yeah, understand exactly. You're like, yeah, where, you're where, Nate's where. dad. <laughs> you're Nate's dad. So uh, yeah, great, great family. Yeah, it, it, listen, it, it, he talks with his upcoming interview. We talk about many things, including becoming a dad for the first time. Uh, apparently, fun fact, had never held a baby before until he became a dad. So th- that's, you know, I think he mentioned that to me once. Yeah. How do you not hold a baby? I don't know. Like I had lots of babies before we I had kids. So it's just. 
Maybe you had lots of babies no, or you no. held lots of babies. <laughs> Let's not start the rumors here. <laughs> we don't want those cards at Father's Day uh, coming up around the corner here. <laughs> On that note, speaking of fathers, here's Nate Schmidt, Ground Control Interview of the Week. Please welcome to the program one of the newest dads in the Winnipeg oh. Jets dressing rooms. This is the way you start things. Right? Yeah. We're not even going to well, get to the other stuff right now. This is Let's just get to the, the, the heart of things. Yeah, hit me. Okay, so being a dad. Yes. Did it look easier to you before you became one? I thought it looked way harder to me. <laughs> okay. When I was watching other people, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> what is happening? What are you doing with this kid of yours? Yeah. Uh, and then since becoming a dad... It, Honestly, the last couple of months have been so awesome because he's starting to move and groove and buzz, and so I get to you know roll around him, you know roll on the floor with him. He's crawling, crawling all over me. I, I, it's it's tough. You know, we talked a little bit briefly about mm. the. I'm happy right now. He can't yeah, say anything back to me. You know, he can't yell back at me or yeah. make any sarcastic comments to me. So it's kind of nice. Um, tell me how old you are. Yeah, yeah, tell me how old I am, and tell me how bold I am. <laughs> <laughs> make, make funny jokes about But you can say right back to him now <laughs> yeah. anyways. The problem is he's got more hair than I do. <laughs> it's an issue. It's an issue that I have. <laughs> oh. um, so with, do your parents kind of like chip in with any type of information whatsoever? Or do the in-laws <laughs> come in with their wisdom at all at this point? We'll it's early. Anything. We'll take it yeah, all. Yeah. You know, I usually just put out a book and just say, just write down your suggestions. <laughs> Tell me what I need to do here. A lot of times. We don't, we don't have a guest book anywhere. Yeah. We just have, we just have Suggest, suggestions. Suggestion box yeah. at the Schmidt house. Yeah, it's uh, a... <laughs> It's really uh, a lot of times my wife and I look at each other and say, what are we doing? Um, let's try this, you know, and maybe you should call grandma and grandpa. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's so much less daunting now mm-hmm. um, than it was at the beginning. You just don't know. I never held the, I'd never held a baby before. Really? Like an actual ch- newborn. Yeah. Had never held one. Never changed a diaper, no nothing. And I got one, and I got one, and I was doing like this. Started carrying around, like, you know, like just like holding, like, man, just holding, like, If man, I keep like, him as far away from yeah, possible. I, like, I started bringing him in, he started crying, and I put him back out again. Because that like, always works. Yeah. The, yeah. the further away the yeah. crying will stop. He, I'm not mom, okay? <laughs> I can't change that. I can't change that. I know you love your mother. Um, you and I have something in common. You, you and I both worked at a convenience store. So. Yes. Oh. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, so I love that, that's it. it. So my career went a little bit different yeah. than yours. Too, but, um, hey, I'm stay. I still work there every once in a while. The Shell Convenience Store. Yeah. Do your parents still have it? They just just retired about a month ago. Finally, they sold the last one. Off. Okay. Um, so that's it. There's uh, the end of an era at the Schmidt House. Um, so yeah, kind of a kind of a bu- bummer, but at the same time, you know, also. I mean, it was. So your son isn't going to take over the company, is what? You never know. You can always buy back in. That's right. I can't imagine. You have some money put aside to take the the convenience store chain back. Bring the yeah. (laughs) The the guys used to always make fun of me growing up. I always called it the empire, which was so dumb. But they always called that. They'd be like, "Hey, Shmi, when are you going to take over the empire?" And I just. Well, My high school coach used to give it to me all the time. He's like, "Hey, well, where's the free gas from the Empire?" You know, yeah, like, yeah. and I'd be like, "Guys, you talk to talk to my dad. I'm not, you know, I'm just the I'm just the lonely handyman. I get I get all the jobs that nobody else wants." Oh, Did you God. have to wear like so the you know, I worked at Shell okay. and we had the polyester gray pants yep. with uh, the polyester gray and with the red and yellow stripes oh, plus I know it. the clip on tie. So I and my pants were too short. So it's just like it's the ultimate humiliation. Yeah. When you roll into the office that day up yeah. until the time you get to take that off. Yeah, yeah. I fortunate. Well, I guess it depends how you look at it. I got like I said, I got all the jobs. It was like, hey, Nate, go clean the car wash. So I couldn't wear that stuff out there. So nope. I was wearing like grimy grungy clothes like i had a work set of sweatpants i don't think i washed for three years and my mom finally found them in the back of my car and was mortified Mm -hmm. um but like you know clean the bugs from the canopy and so i didn't have to wear the smocks as much as uh or if ever i was always just in the the grungy (laughs) they cleaned the cleaner clothes what what's your favorite memory from the convenience store because listen you do not get treated very well in that uh, business at all. Like, I mean, there's something there's, you have your regulars, great people always. Yeah, but just... yeah. I would say, goodness, my favorite memory. I, my dad uh, and my my, dad, my mom and dad had uh, this type of pizza, and all of the stores that I would go around and work at could, yeah. would all know my order, and they always <laughs> would know I'm coming. And so my favorite part was all the ladies that would cook the pizza. Yeah, would be like. 
hey Nate, <laughs> I got one like there's one like in the back with my name on it. it was okay, like, so what's eh? the what, what's the pizza it brand? Was, it was called Bases Loaded, okay. uh, but we like kind of made all the dough, everything in in house, like, and it was double cheese, pepperoni, sausage, and they always would throw like a little like always extra of meat on it. Like it, would look, it even looked like a pizza, just looked like a cheese pie. <laughs> you like, pull it off, and there's like still a whole of cheese on it. My dad once told me, "You eat more than you make." me money so yeah. you actually cost me money every time i send you to work it's classic dad line classic dad line he's probably not wrong though <laughs> no it's the, be- the best well, most dad's terms are truth yeah so it's just like so many stuff. things i'm realizing my dad said to me dad if you're listening i believe you I, I get it now i get it are you good you wait for this one uh why is the lights on in your bedroom when you're not in it is a classic uh. You wasted energy. Exactly. Thank you. So finally, somebody knows what I go through. Like, like, but now I'm saying it. So yeah, it's just like, I know. And you get mad. All the stuff you say, your dad, you would never be about your father. You become. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I, I will walk downstairs like, why is it? I'll even say it to my wife. I'll be like, why is the light on? Downstairs? <laughs> She's like, man, I was just down there. We were just playing downstairs. Yeah. You know this this. Bowl, Do you know how much energy is yeah, going out the door? This bowl isn't gonna walk itself to the dishwasher. <laughs> And I literally would put my head and be like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I've heard these words before. And do you stare? <laughs> They're coming just, into yeah, my ears instead of like, going out of my mouth. <laughs> it's like when Luke Skywalker discovers he's, Dar- he's oh, Darth Vader's his father. Hit me with the Star Wars. <laughs> now we're into it. Now mm-hmm. we are. Now we're into, we're it. into something here. Yes. Okay, so popular conversation nowadays is the direction that Star Wars is going. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what. I, hold on. First of all, let's just. Yeah, sure. We got to back up. Let's back up. I love the origin story. I love the new, um, you know, Obi Wan. Mm -hmm. I love Man Mandalorians. Yes, fantastic. John Favreau is great. Um, I love how they do it too. They have a new director in Mm -hmm. to direct the episode, so you get a different flair on episodes, which I think is really cool. You're not getting like the same thing. I I think that that show could continue on for a long time because you're getting people to do it. Yeah, Um, it's exciting. I don't know what's gonna happen. I I've I usually like to be pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. So I try and stay out of like what they're going to do next. So you don't read anything about it? I try not like... to because I find that I go into a huge rabbit hole. And yeah. I try very hard not to. It's hard. And I should have <laughs> never told you about uh, New Rockstars and stuff no, like no, that. Oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, New Rockstars. Has been a... I, how about this? That was when I watched a couple and I was like, okay, I got to stop. Cold turkey. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to be here all day every day. You will. <laughs> it, it's, it's actually stunning how far and how long you will go into it. So, so I am of the belief that I don't try to read too much into it because all I want to do is enjoy. Yeah, yeah. So if I hear the negative stories about it. I just I block those out. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm a Star Wars apologist. So I'm like, you know, it actually Same. wasn't that bad. And then Daniel Moss, who runs this program here and everything like that, who is obviously smarter than us, <laughs> he'll go into the details. And I'm like, why are you telling yeah, me stop. this? Yeah, I don't want that. Because yeah. then I see it, then I'm like, oh, I now I'm annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone yeah. would be like, hey, the first three, you don't like them. I'm like, yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. And they look at you like there's something wrong with you. Because all I want to be is entertained. I just like it. Yeah. Hey, I don't care. Like people are like, oh, I don't. It's, just, it's the same thing with movie sequels. People will say, you know, The Hangover. The Hangover yeah. 2 came out. Like, That's the same movie. I'm like, well, duh. It's called The Hangover. Yeah. You just be entertained. Okay. When has a hangover been any different <laughs> yeah, in your entire it's lifetime? The same just thing. the levels of hangover. That's the only thing that's different. Seriously. Right. It's, it's all thing. about the recovery and everything you found out that you did the day before. Not that Comes we've ever done this. No. No. Of course not. No, no, no. <laughs> I've had a root beer hangover once, though. That was a real issue. Oh. Too much sugar come down the next day. That it's amazing bad. how long it takes you to find out what sugar plays a role in your hangovers. Oh. That's the worst part. Sugar what do you mean? I had lots sugar. of I Gatorade yeah. with my Sh- vodka. Sugar is an issue. <laughs> yeah, sugar is an issue. Lots of sugar consumed over your childhood. Uh, listen, we watched the Jets draft. They're talking about who was best at everything. Now, ah. does, does everyone carry in the same esteem as Adam Lowry does when it comes to baseball? Like, do people, the, the guys in the rest, everyone in the dressing room realize how good you are at uh, baseball or are still I still think that P is, uh, I still, I would love, I told P, well, oh. Because P has the. We has had a the, great argument the other day. Like, okay. Do you think we could put together a team with our guys? Yeah. Could we put together a team of guys that could play a high school baseball team and win? In the Jets dressing room. In the Jets dressing room. So have you thought this out? Yes, we thought it out. Okay, what position are you at? So I'm probably going to play outfield. Probably going to play center. Okay. And, and what part of the batting order are you in? Uh. I mean, I'd probably hit three okay. or one. Honestly, I would you have ho- speed still. Yeah, yeah, got some good legs. Um, I, the problem is pitching's not an issue because I pitched, Neil pitched, Adam pitched. So like, we'll okay. have enough guys that can go out and munch some innings. You should make sure you get Adam to tell you the story about his dad, about twelve-year-old playoffs or something like that. You got the legend. Carry on. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't so like, we're like, okay, so like going around like every position, like Neil. 
could catch or play short. Like, I don't know, like, trying to, like, he looks like a shortstop, like yeah, flat yeah, out. He's more yeah. of a third baseman, short little legs. <laughs> Long torso, though. He can get to the line. It's not a joke. It's true. But, See, it's not an insult if it's factual. Yeah, so, okay. so like, we got guys – we got – the issue would be, I feel like, in some of the corner of the outfield, the guys that maybe wouldn't – like, we just got to hope to God that we don't get knocked around the park at all. And the only issue is, is, like, what if we're playing high school? Where's baseball? the home runs coming from? Yeah, we're going to be a small – Because you're a contact guy, We're going to be a small – we're going to be the Minnesota Twins of the early 90s, of just small ball. Small ball, <laughs> bunting. Yeah. Bunting, getting guy over. Sacrifice. Stealing. A couple, yeah. couple of these, just like, yeah, sack. Yeah, let's, get, so let's move the runners P, over. P would be a guy with dirt all over his uniform, would he not be? I don't know if that guy has ever had a clean uniform. He just seems like a guy that was – he would probably dive, before, mm-hmm. like, in warm-up. <laughs> just to get his, just to get, his stuff just to get everything ready. It's yeah. just, I'm ready to go. Uh, yeah. This is what I'm going to do for you today. So who would be who would be a guy in the dressing room that would be surprisingly good at baseball, or that we don't know that people would know about? You know what I would say is just he's not like I, I could see Fetch just being like a little silky oh, second baseman, yeah. like a, one of these you know spin that spin yeah. that you know at from second. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of second baseman. I I also could see. Like Casey, Casey's just kind of a natural athlete. Yeah. Right. So like he could play anywhere in the outfield. Not too. really bragging about it. everything's so easy. Yeah. yeah. Life's easy for him. Yes. I'm telling you, good hair too. Same pace. Yeah. All the time. I mean, like he'll pick up a golf club. Like, oh, good shot, man. <laughs> Only 350 yeah. yards. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. No, he's great though. I think he'd be a guy that would just be. He'd pick up a bat and be like, oh yeah, this isn't really the right line, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. This cool. isn't my bat. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's yours. Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever, man. You're it's over 12. Yeah. He hits a home run the first at bat. No problem. Um, two things we we kind of talked about this. Two things that you think you'll do exactly the same as your dad oh. wh- when your kids uh, get older. I, my dad was always uh, really big on re- just like respect of uh, people that are older than you, and also respecting um, like. I never called anybody by their first name, any parents. Mm-hmm. I always called them like, ah, oh, that's Mr. Schmidt. Or yeah, for sure. Know? And so I, I think that that's been lost a little bit. And I, I like the fact that it kind of, it just kind of say, hey, like, I appreciate it. Thank you. And, and I had my, my best friend's dad. I was 25. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mr. Myers, how you doing today? He goes, Nate. And I went over to his house for a barbecue. And he goes, Nate, call me Mr. Myers one more time. I'm not going to let you inside to eat. He's had enough? I was like, I've had enough. You're 25. Now it's time to call me Joe. I was okay. like, thank you, Mr. Joe Myers. <laughs> <laughs> he looked back at me, and he just was like, I can't follow you, but yes, <laughs> you're by side. It was great. You know what? It's just, I think that's one. Um, the second would be, uh, my parents were always like being on grades. Like it was like, hey, mm-hmm. you didn't have grades? Yeah. Like you didn't have Not average. going anywhere. Yeah, you're not yeah. going anywhere. B, like, I missed a baseball. I got, like, a C- minus on a Spanish test. And it was, like, the first thing of the year. So it was, like, the first quiz. So it was, like, you get, like, your report card. That's not, like, your final grade. But it said I had, like, a D plus or a C- minus. Because I got one. Sending a message to the so parents. So it was, like, uh, they're, like, hey, you're not playing in the baseball game tomorrow. Really? And I was choked. I was, like, oh. I'm, like, it's just the first. They're, like, that yeah, doesn't matter. Like, you don't, you, don't, uh, you don't mess around. Like, you mess around at school. Hey, can't pretend that you're gonna make it. Like I had no idea, like whether making sports or not. Like, yeah, you can't pretend to do it. So you know what you know you're gonna love is power school. Power school. Yeah. So like when your kid isn't in class, you get a mass email right away. You can check their marks like now. There's like there's no privacy for kids nowadays. Ooh. So like I can go. I don't know. Like, ah. I can see my daughter's test mark like two days later, and come back and go, hey, how do you think you did? Oh no. Yeah. She, she, so she has to. There's like you. no privacy. Does she know that you know? They know we know. They know power school. Okay, so yeah. they don't know, like, hey, how did you do on your test? I yeah. got 95. For sure. Are like, sure? I've heard I did so sure? great at that test, and I'm Are like, you sure? eh, <laughs> do you want to back that up a little yeah, bit? I yeah. see 77 here. Yeah, yeah, that's and, no good. And then you feel, because, uh, listen, I'll tell you right now, I was not the best student, so my kids get, like, 80s, 90s. and So you feel like a hypocrite when you go, yeah. wow, 77%. Yeah, you're, you're doing it. Well, you get 77%. Like, <laughs> That was kind of like me at the end of my Like, book. someone would have to take my test for me to get 77%. So that part is always interesting. Um, two more before I let you go. Um, the way things are going right now, how does that toughen you up for the playoff grind? Yeah, I think um, you're seeing what doesn't work. For sure. <laughs> I, yeah. For our guys, I find that um, I think that we've, we've seen, we've been a little bit uh, you know, stubborn about the way we've been playing a little bit. But at the same time, this is going to happen. You're not going to walk into a playoff series and just go bang, 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 bang. Yeah. See you next round. 
You know what I mean? Like we're gonna go right into the next round. We'll keep. You know what I mean? It just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. There'll be times when you get outplayed, and there's times when you outplay a team and lose. I just you have to understand that this stuff happens, and you just for me. Uh, the reason why you don't get too down on it because it's it, you just can't let it because it snowballs on you. Mm-hmm. And in a playoff series, I mean, there have been multiple teams the last you know ten years have gone down three one, three nothing in series, come back win. I mean, it's yeah, it used to be impossible at one time. Now it's been done. It's been done. Now yeah. it's like, oh, this is actually possible. Mm-hmm. And we have guys on our team that are totally. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he's done it. Been in a, been in a series you know, when he was playing for the Kings. You know, it's just like it's it's possible. So you you can't find yourself. Too far down that ladder, otherwise you just, you find it too too hard to, to to climb out of it. And when did you find, as a player, you got over that? You know how fans react to each win and loss. When did you cross <laughs> that threshold into oh, okay? We're I wore it one tomorrow. Yeah, I yeah. wore it for a little while too. I yeah. wore it for a while, first couple of years, and then I just once I started playing in the playoffs in Washington a couple of times, and you start to realize it's like okay, and guys would be coming to the ring, and we just gotten smoked, and then you come to the ring the next day, and like, yeah, all right, let's go game mm-hmm. three, game three tomorrow. You know, no time, no time to think about that one. Yeah. You know, it's just you don't have, and when you kind of think of it that way, it's like, all right, well, you you literally just you put it away and you, you say, okay, our game is tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. Now I'm doing everything I can today, like yesterday, everything I can do yesterday to prepare for a game. You know, so I just that that's the way I look at it. So you you go in, you have a big lunch, and all of a sudden, you know, like getting us on and do a stretch that night. It's nothing to do with the day before. It was the, everything I did was for the next game. Mm-hmm. So that's the way I look at it. I find that. It's actually been a lot more. It's easier to kind of let that go because if you, like I said, if you sit and dwell on it, it'll eat you alive. Thanks for your time, man. Good yes. luck the rest of the way here. Thank you. Appreciate it. As always, great stuff from Nate Schmidt. Uh, appreciate him coming on the podcast, the interview. And by the next time we do this, hopefully, there is an X beside the Winnipeg uh, hopefully. Jets game. I'll be and coming to you live from, <laughs> not live. This is a podcast. You will be on the road. I will be. Colorado, uh, I think. So yeah, it was or no 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 no, because it's Nashville on the Tuesday. Uh, You guys will be in Dallas by the time we record on the Wednesday, I believe. So hopefully, there's lots of good news coming. Big D. It'll be Tyler Esquivel embedded in Nashville on Broadway. (laughs) Please, (laughs) dear God, no. (laughs) We don't need to see that. On behalf of Nate Schmidt, Tyler Esquivel, I'm Jamie Thomas. Thanks so much for listening to or watching Ground Control. We'll see you next week. (laughs) 